cannot talk about enhancement if we don't know how much there is and how much more we want of it to be. So the idea of enhancement is very much linked to the idea of measurement. Although I speak of measurement, I want to underline something that uh, cost us, if, if you allow me to address you like that. Um, when we talk about children, although we might use numbers and we might use aggregate numbers, we have to remember that each of those individual children are souls and persons and they have rights and they have uh, suffering and, and we have to never, never lose sight of that. I think that's very important. When I talk about measurement, I, I would like to talk about its importance, which as I said, I, I don't need to stress with you. But then there is the issue of the how. And the how takes me to two elements about measurement, and in particular measuring children and children's well-being. One aspect is institutional, and the other aspect is in terms of tools. What do I mean by institutional? I mean that there has to be a national statistical office, or better yet, a national statistical system that addresses and measures the data needs about children. Otherwise, children are invisible. And this is very important because if we don't know, if we don't measure, we don't have an assessment of their situation, it's very difficult to correct it. Now, of course, in UNICEF, we do a lot of work in, in developing countries, but there is also a lot of work in, in, in richer countries. And just, just to give you a sense of what I mean by children being invisible, we do not have, for example, in Japan or the United States, a measure of child poverty. In Europe, fortunately, we are a little bit more advanced. There is a European measure of child poverty has been validated by the European Union. There are data for every country. This is only five years old. Until about five years ago, there was no information, no reliable and comparable data within the European Union on child poverty. Now, you might say, well, but we have it. Yes, but it's so recent and it's just the beginning. The rest of the world doesn't even have that. So we need to strengthen the institutions and in particular the national institutions that need to track the situation of children. We need to collect the data, measure it, analyze it, disseminate it, use it, and in particular, use it for action. I also would like to repeat what, 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 what Costa said, right? It's, it's, it's not about well wishes, it's about doing. And it's about having the data and the measurement and the analysis so that we can do, and in particular, engage in public policies to improve the lives of children. Now, one of the reasons, one of the reasons that we don't have enough data, or it is until very recently, for example, in the context of the European Union, that we have data about child poverty, is that it's difficult. And I want to talk about this difficulty as a link between the institutional how and the tools how. It's difficult because there are many things to look at. We talk about welfare, we talk about well-being, we talk about happiness, we talk about quality of life, we talk about rights. All of these are different conceptual frameworks and each of them have their specificity and each one have their own challenges, challenges connecting from the concept to something we can measure, to something we can measure that's relevant for children or for policies to improve the lives of children which takes me to the tools. What tools do we have to measure the situation of children? We have surveys, household surveys. A lot of variations around that. I'm not going to get into the details of that now. Then there is also administrative data. 
um, and we need to combine them. But we also need to understand what it is that we're measuring, because if you're measuring poverty and we know, we know very well how to measure poverty. In particular, we know how to measure child poverty. We measure this all over the world um, and besides in the European Union. But poverty is about material aspects, right? It's about not having food. It's about not having a proper home. It's about not having clothes. But child well-being goes beyond poverty. It's about the relationships of that child with his or her friends or family or the capacity to express themselves. A lot of other non-material elements of child well-being, which are more difficult to measure, which leads to two questions. One is how do we measure non-material aspects of child well-being? The second one is once we measure the non-material aspects of child well-being, how do we combine them with poverty, with the material aspects of child well-being? There are no easy answers for that. Um, if there is opportunity for question and answers afterwards, I'm happy to say a few words about that, but that's not what I wanted to use the time for now. I just wanted to give you this overview of the importance, the how, the institutional and the tools aspect of how, and raise some questions. And I want to close by saying that in all of these process, as important as it is to look at the statistics, and to have this national statistical system that includes children and do not allow children to be invisible, we also need to listen to children. We need to incorporate in our data analysis the voices of children, whether directly or indirectly, for example, through the participation on the internet. And I know and I'm enthused and looking forward to some of the presentations tomorrow and the day after which actually address these issues that I have been talking about, um, from, from measuring to the voices of children and capturing the reality of children through, through the internet and their participation, et cetera. I am very happy to join you. I'm very pleased, as I said, very honored. And I want to wish you lots of good luck for the next um, two days. Eferistos. <laughs>